Bullying. If anyone dared to bully me while I was in primary school, I had the ability to convince them to go to the principal's office and have themselves expelled. And also, kittens. Wait, wait, I'll explain. Welcome to Tunacheki, Africa in the News. I'm Mekimushi, and this is a show where we look at how Western media covers Africa, where we go through all the prejudice, racism, misinformation, and this week that saw almost every Western government bullying African leaders not to attend the African Union meeting in Addis Ababa. We look at how Western governments use the mainstream media to bully African countries into submission. So before we start, please make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like this video. It really helps us a lot if you like this video because it shows YouTube uh, this is a good video and it will recommend it to like-minded people like you. So let's spread that African content. So this week, uh, Ethiopia's Prime Minister uh, Abiy Ahmed thanked African leaders uh, for deciding to hold the 20th anniversary AU President's meeting in Addis Ababa. So, why is this important? This was a result of brutal and secret campaigns by prominent Western countries pressuring African leaders to betray Ethiopia by undermining the seat of the African Union just to get back at the recent victories uh, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Ibi Hamed has had over Western new colonization of Africa. He stood up to the West and he won and uh, now they're trying to get back at him anyway how. So, uh, this is uh, why this is troubling how they use Western media to bully African leaders, not doing things that will benefit Africa. So uh, the goal of these uh, diplomats who secretly, you know, behind the doors threatened uh, these uh, African leaders, if not threatening, maybe compel them to not meet in Addis Ababa. Why is this important? Because the West is hell-bent to show that Addis Ababa is not safe. We were there just last week. Addis Ababa is as safe as any other uh, like uh, city, uh, New York, Washington DC. It's it's so safe. But these Western governments, they're trying. They're really, really, really trying to push push the false narrative that Addis Ababa is not safe. So that they were using the African presidents uh, to make it so that. Uh, uh, Addis Ababa is not safe, so please don't hold your annual meeting, which has been held for almost uh, 20 years, right, in Addis Ababa. So the excuses uh, they wanted uh, African leaders to give for not attending in Addis Ababa was uh, COVID, at, uh, like they were like COVID-19 is uh, like prominent in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has a very low COVID-19 uh, 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 case base compared to countries like Western countries like uh, the UK, which had the uh, G20 meeting, which had the climate change meeting, and the New York, which had the UN general meeting. So that really doesn't make sense. Also, uh, they were trying to say uh, Addis Ababa is not secure. As I said, Addis Ababa is as secure as any other Western city that uh, they'd like to show us, even some, some more compared to all the shootings that happened in these Western cities that they don't uh, report all the time. So this is what uh, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia had to say about uh, this. So uh, the Prime Minister in his statement thanking the African leaders' commitment and choice to convene the EU summit in Ethiopia said there was a push as we talked about what push there was, uh, Western diplomats were pushing African countries not to, not to, not to go to Addis Ababa. So let's uh, get back to the uh, statement. There was a push to change the location of the African Union summit from Addis Ababa. At this time, when we are seeking your fraternal partnership, the action of those who have been pushing for a EU summit to be held out of Addis Ababa, citing COVID-19 spread and security situation as pretext, has saddened Ethiopia. It's saddened the whole of Africa. Like, how, how can you bully people not to meet at their house? You, you, you know, like the bullying has gone on too long and uh, Western media has been the number one uh, for, like the number one uh, perpetrator of this. They, they've spread false information to scare people. Even they're scaring people who actually live in Africa. Well, those people reporting, most of them haven't even been to Africa. So uh, the Prime Minister continues, the implication of hosting the summit in Addis Ababa is immense as it proves our peace and stability as well as enabling us to reaffirm our stance to African agenda and practically demonstrate the good situation of Ethiopia to our African friends, the Premier stated. The government has been undertaking diplomatic efforts with African countries and the African Union Commission to hold the summit in the capital city, he added. 
he finishes uh, the statement. Uh, the statement is uh, a bit long. Uh, we'll link it in the descriptions below so you can read exactly what was going on. Of course, he couldn't directly say uh, what was going on that uh, the West, uh, Western diplomats, the, the Western leaders forced were forcing other African leaders not to go to Addis Ababa to attend their own African Union meeting. You, you know, in the diplomacy world, you cannot say these things. You have to say things in a you know, smart, hidden way, right? But people with sources uh, tell us that uh, there was huge pressure on African leaders, some being bribed, others being uh, like threatened uh, that they might lose some funding not to go to Addis Ababa. So uh, just to conclude, uh, the continental body consists of 55 member states and only launched in 2002 as the successor to the Organization of Africa Unity that existed from 1968 to 1999. So this organization is just 19 years old and it's young. And also, so just recently, the election of two commissioners in October 2021, the new commissioners is just now fully operational. So this means that uh, the African Union, since it was inaugurated uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, is actually now starting to get its footing, right? So that's why I started this video with uh, the cutest kittens you've ever seen, because the African Union are just kittens. Uh, I've got colleagues, uh, we talk about uh, the African Union a lot, who always say the African Union is like a toothless lion, right? It's like, a, no, no, no. The African Union is not even a lion. It's just a kitten, right? And it's finding its footsteps in this precarious world that we live in, right? So let's discuss bullying uh, by Western media and uh, bullying by Western governments towards African countries, right? So this has been happening. And uh, as I said, the African Union is just a kitten. Uh, you can't expect a kitten to fight for itself. Right, you can't expect this this organization that just launched uh, twenty like uh, nineteen years ago to have the strength to fight the powers like uh, the United States to fight the powers of uh, the EU to fight uh, like other world powers like China and Russia. Right, so we have to give the Af African Union a chance when it comes to building up Africa. So uh, with the like uh, out of the. 19 years, I can say uh, the good thing that has come out from the African Union is the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. This is a very monumental and uh, important agreement that will open the markets to Africa, to all Africans, so that Africa does not depend on outside trade, but trades within itself. Uh, this is going to be the largest trade organization, trade uh, pact, trade agreement in the world, uh, beating uh, uh, like, uh, like the others. So, it's really important what the African Union is doing. It's still young, it's still a kitten. Give it a chance, right? Uh, I'm sure in the next 20 years, we will be seeing something very different from the African Union, right? So before you start uh, uh, telling, uh, telling people that African Union does nothing, just uh, check the history and see how these things work, right? Uh, the Europeans and uh, the Americans killed, them, killed each other in wars, bloody wars, uh, like for centuries. Uh, Africa is a very young, uh, continent uh, when it comes to like a modern democracy and we're just finding our foothold. So this will really allow us to start uh, with a very solid foundation, a, a foundation better than uh, what Europe had, a foundation better than what America had. And so, uh, like when it comes to bullying, uh, it's not about uh, size. Uh, you can be a big guy and uh, and uh, bully somebody who's small. It's not about size, it's about mentality. And uh, as I said uh, in the beginning of this video, uh, like when I was small, uh, like when I was in primary school, I was short. I was a short, plump kid, right? Uh, I was a late bloomer and still I was never bullied. I was one of those kids who uh, would actually convince the person who was to bully me to turn themselves in. Uh, so Africa, uh, before it grows up, uh, like me, I grew up to be 6'3", uh, a monster, right? Whoever knew that small kid would grow up to be a giant, right? So before Africa has a chance to grow up uh, like me, right? It's still a kitten, as I said, it's still that kid. Give it a chance, right? And just because Africa right now, the African Union uh, is small, is growing, uh, it doesn't mean it can be bullied around or pushed around. So the message of the day is uh, stop the bullying of uh, Africa, stop the bullying of African leaders. Let Africa determine its own destiny. Let Africa make its own decision, right? And uh, with the presidents uh, and leaders like uh, Prime Minister, like Ibi Hamed, uh, this is the new generation that's showing uh, the West that uh, we, you cannot intimidate us, you cannot bully us. Uh, if you want to try uh, invade us, you can try. But uh, 
uh, history uh, as president over that, right? So, thank you for watching our video, African The News. We really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in to uh, our, our videos and uh, uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all our members, uh, our subscribers, our Patreons and our donors. Uh, you really appreciate it. Uh, you saw our kittens. Cat food is quite expensive. So, if you want to help us out, continue making these videos. Uh, please uh, check out the descriptions below. You can either become a Patreon, a member, or just directly donate to us through our PayPal. So thank you again. Uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And as I said, it's really important you like and share this video. Uh, it really shows YouTube. This is a good video and it will help uh, like perpetuate this video. More people will know about what's going on. So with that said, thank you for watching. We'll check you out in the next one. And remember, Africa is watching. Oh, my God.